Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on party politics in China. Today's episode was requested by someone on my request form. If you want me to talk about another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Croatian parties, Belgian parties, Filipino parties, Colombian parties, New Zealand parties, Nigerian parties, Irish parties, Danish parties, Japanese parties, Brazilian parties, and many more. So I'm sure a decent number of you are probably a bit confused. After all, China is a one-party communist state with the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP holding all political power with no real elections whatsoever. Well, I don't want to say this is entirely wrong, but it's also not the whole story. First, I do want to talk about the method of getting elected to office in China. So China has one main legislative body, the National People's Conference, or NPC. The 2,980 members of this legislature are not directly elected to office. Based on what I found, it seems only some local officials and some legislators in Hong Kong and Macau are directly elected into office. The delegates for the MPC are instead indirectly elected from 36 different electoral units, with officials from each of these units electing a certain number of legislators into office. This system is often described as selection plus election. The number of delegates from each of these electoral districts will vary depending on the populations of the district and also how the CCP values them. What do I mean by this? Well, let's start looking at the districts. 34 of the districts are based around geographic entities. These are the 22 provinces controlled by the People's Republic of China, 5 autonomous regions, 4 municipalities, 2 special administrative regions, and finally, even though it is not controlled by the PRC, Taiwanese people found throughout China are also represented by their own delegation of 13 delegates. Shandong sends the most delegates out of these geographic entities, with it sending 162 delegates. Macau, meanwhile, sends the least, with it only sending 12 members. While most members are elected by geographic entities, 265 delegates, the most out of any electoral unit, are elected from the People's Liberation Army of China, while another 255 are elected from the Standing Committee of the National People's Conference. What is the Standing Committee of the National People's Conference? Well, working with a legislator of almost 3,000 delegates would be insanely difficult, because even though political debates are limited, they do still happen among politicians, and working out the fine, nitty-gritty details of policy can be challenging with so many voices. This is why the Standing Committee of the MPC exists. The Standing Committee serves as a smaller, more powerful, and permanent body of the MPC, as the MPC is only active for several months. Both the MPC as a whole and the Standing Committee write rules and regulations for China, along with electing the President and Premier of China. Okay, so there is some very limited democracy in China. But China is a one-party state, right? So, yes, it is usually classified as that, and the CCP is the strongest and largest party, and holds the vast majority of political power in the country. However, there are other parties that are present in China, and do hold some very limited power. There are eight of these parties that belong to the United Front, an organization run by the CCP. These parties are often described as democratic parties. China ultimately described this system as the system of multi-party cooperation and political consultation under the leadership of the Communist Party of China. This system does allow for different political parties, but all under the leadership of, and are subservient to, the CCP, with the power given to these parties not decided by the parties themselves or the people of China, but ultimately decided by the CCP's party's leadership. Why does China operate under such a system? Wouldn't it be easier for the CCP to just run China on its own? Well, it should be noted that this idea of communist states with multiple allowed parties is not just an idea in China. North Korea also does have multiple puppet parties in the country, when East Germany, Czechoslovakia, and Poland were communist. They all had similar puppet parties operating in them. So ultimately, the United Front is not a strange Chinese idea, but also a strange idea that has and does exist in several other Marxist-Leninist states. But why have it? 
Well, there's several different theories, ideas, and explanations for why they exist. And which one you believe is the most accurate will very much vary on your thoughts towards the CCP and modern China. One idea is that the United Front parties essentially all recognize the importance and insight the CCP has, and have all come to the natural conclusion that they should work with the CCP, because the CCP knows best, and they can help bring the CCP certain elements of knowledge to the greatest party that has ever existed, the CCP. This is the pretty clear pro-CCP message, and the one that the CCP wants to push. And it's probably true that most people in the United Front parties are very pro-status quo in China, and these parties did, at the end of the Chinese Civil War, agree to work with the CCP. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the idea that the United Front parties, which are all puppet parties, serve to control opposition in China, and present to the world this idea that actually China is a multi-party democracy that isn't completely dominated and controlled by the CCP. Like how the East German puppet parties were filled with members of the secret police, these parties are also accused of having secret police and members of the CCP within the ranks of these parties being used to spy on any potential dissidents and keep them in line or neutralize them quickly. This to a certain extent I believe in. I don't believe any of the parties we will talk about have a diverging ideology from the CCP. Many were created by pro-CCP individuals, and they are all pretty clearly friendly with the CCP. However, I'd also say that the idea that every single party member is a member of the secret police, and they were all created as a honeypot, is also a bit ridiculous for me. Having hundreds of thousands of secret agents is really just a massive waste of state resources, especially since most people often just self-police themselves. And while, yeah, there are probably hundreds of thousands of secret agent types in China, they are probably not a part of these quite frankly, irrelevant parties. Instead, the theory I most believe in is that these parties are used as a way to get certain voices into political positions. The democratic parties are usually composed of a very small, niche group of people. Thinking about a party's electorate in an actual democracy, most parties try to appeal to a wide range of people throughout the country. The Conservative Party of Canada, for example, appeals to rural voters, more devout Christians, more well-off Canadians, Canadians living in the West, and obviously people who self-define themselves as conservative. Not every Canadian fits this category, but a decent chunk of them do. However, the legal parties of China appeal in comparison to a very small subsect of the population. For example, one of the parties I will talk about appeals just to those whose family formerly had some relation to Taiwan. The Front's ultimate goal is to get these niche voices who, for whatever reason, might not be fully absorbed into the CCP, in the government. The party support base is often highly technical, and probably knows a lot about some certain issue or field of expertise. So it allows these experts to get into power, and help craft policy, or give advice to the CCP. So before we dive into these parties, I'm just going to be honest, I'm a little unsure for a lot of this episode. Admittedly, propaganda and political parties and organizations trying to present themselves as good as possible is not a unique Chinese thing. But one thing I will say is, it's so weird to have so little actual good information. At least in the English media, there is very little you can find actually discussing the parties. There's a couple of videos from CGTN that just mention the parties, but they don't actually explain who or what they are. I did find a couple of Western academic articles and conferences that talked about the United Front and its role in influencing and controlling society, but they again don't actually focus on the organizations themselves. I suspect both the Chinese state and Western analysis have kind of come to the conclusion that nobody really cares about these small parties. They don't actually hold any real power. So I've really been left with just what the parties say on their websites which is often a mess due to Google Translate not working very well with Chinese letters, and very short Wikipedia articles. Even once you start reading their websites, you hear like the same 10 phrases popping up again and again, so they all end up feeling exactly the same. Quite frankly, China is one of those countries where it feels like every single piece of information about the state is just someone trying to sell you some fake image to China to push some sort of political message which is how it works to a certain extent for everything, but for some reason for China, it feels really blatant and just heavy-handed. So I guess just keep it in mind that 
you want to take all of this with a very big grain of salt. Hopefully, I've come up with something interesting, although through all the vagueness. Also obligatory, I don't speak Chinese. Feel free to make fun of me and snicker at me, embarrassing myself as I attempt to pronounce things that I know I can't pronounce. Now that we are done talking about the theories and wider context for the parties, let's actually start diving into them. First, we have the Jusen Society, or 9-3 Society, or Jusen Shu Shu. 9-3, by the way, refers to September the 3rd the day after Japan surrendered to China at the end of World War II. It was founded originally as a democracy and science forum in 1944, but rebranded itself under its current name in 1946. The party, like most of the other parties in the United Front, suffered in the Cultural Revolution, being denounced as rightist, but after liberalization in the late 80s, the party has seen significant growth, and it seems most of the parties are sympathetic towards some sort of reform, towards less power for the CCP, and greater civil rights although they also aren't advertising these points, and are again very loyal to the CCP. The Jusen Society was originally made up of various academics that were broadly sympathetic to the CCP at the end of the Second World War. It today has shifted towards representing high and middle level intellectuals in the scientific and technological circles, so primarily science teachers, physicians, and engineers. It seems to focus mostly on helping the government with policy related to science, hoping to promote more scientific and technological innovation, and also, apparently, push to legalize Bitcoin in the country. It currently runs a newspaper called Democracy and Science, and I assume talks about the mixing of science with the ideology of socialism with Chinese characteristics. It has a total of 180,000 members, and sends 64 delegates to the NPC. It is currently headed by Wu Weihua, a microbiologist, professor from the China Agricultural University, a member of the NPC. Next we go to the China Association for Promoting Democracy, or Junguo Minjun Shu Wei, or ZMC. ZMC was founded at the end of 1945 as a collection of pro-CCP academics, and it seems, according to them, they were targeted in their early days by the rival Kuomintang, or KMT, for it not siding with the KMT in the Civil War. It joined with the CCP at war's end, and has since sought to promote a socialistic economy and political construction, socialistic culture, and a socialistic society. It gets most support among teachers and intellectuals working in cultural fields and education, and apparently the average age of the party member is 52 years old. It runs the Democracy Monthly newspaper apparently, but I could not find the newspaper at all, and its website at least from what I could find doesn't link back to it. Although, funnily enough, I did find a couple of pages that seem to deal with books and poetry that party members have written. It has 182,000 members and sends 58 delegates to the NPC. It is currently headed by Sei Dai Feng, a professor of architecture at Fudon University, and also a member of the standing committee of the NPC. We go to another party with Democratic in their name, with the China Democratic League, or Junguo Minjun Tong Mong, or CDL. The CDL was formed in 1941 by a collection of Chinese political organizations and people who opposed both the KMT's authoritarian leadership and the CCP's Marxism. It, while much smaller than either the KMT and CCP, did manage to find some limited support, and after World War II, attempted to act as a middleman and set up peace talks to resolve the Chinese Civil War peacefully. However, in 1948, the KMT began cracking down on the CDL, which drove some of its members out of the organization, and it became a firm ally of the CCP. It nowadays is mainly made up of academics and intellectuals working in social sciences, education and culture, and are mostly found in large urban areas. It seems the goal of the party is in helping the CCP with cultural and educational issues. It runs the Chu Yen magazine, which seems to talk mostly about political and cultural news in China, along with short stories written by party members. It is the largest of the Democratic parties, with it having over 330,000 members, which is still 90 million smaller than the CCP, and sends 57 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Ding Zhongli, a geologist, president of the Chinese Overseas Student Association, and also a member of the Standing Committee of the NPC. Next we go to the China National Democratic Construction Association, or Junguo Minjun Juguo Hui, or CNDCA. CNDCA was founded in 1945 to represent industrialist and petty bourgeoisie 
who hoped for a peaceful end to the Civil War. However, much like the CDL, the CNDCA was targeted by the KMT, and quickly fell into the communist fold, and was used to discourage business people from fleeing China after the communist takeover. The CNDCA is still made up of industrialists along with entrepreneurs and economists in urban areas. It seems to work with the CCP in developing economic policy, along with helping establish friendly relations with industrialists in Hong Kong and Macau. It also apparently builds a lot of housing for low-income families. It runs the Journal of Economic Affairs, which discusses economic theories and ideas. It has 204,000 members and sends 57 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Hao Ming Jing, the head of the Central Institute of Socialism and a member of the MPC. The next party was actually formerly a part of the CDL, but broke off once the KMT started cracking down on the CDL. The Chinese Peasants and Workers Democratic Party, or Zhonggo Nonggon Mizudang, was founded in 1930. It was formed from a combination of dissident KMT and CCP members, who hoped to find a middle ground between the Marxist CCP and the KMT's nationalism. The party was quickly targeted by the KMT, and its leader, Dong Yen Da, was executed. The Peasants and Workers Party later, in 1933, attempted to form a rival government in Fujian, but was quickly defeated by the KMT the next year. It joined the CDL in 1941 before leaving the organization in 1947, and growing close to the CCP, helping them fight in the Civil War. The party is mostly made up of people working in the health and medical field, and apparently works to expand hospitals in rural areas. It runs the China Primary Healthcare Foundation, which seems to be an organization that provides funds and loans for public welfare. The party has about 190,000 members, and sends 54 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Chen Chu, a hermitologist, a member of the MPC, and was the former Minister of Health. After that, we have the Revolutionary Committee of the Chinese Kuomintang, or Zhu Guo Guoming Guoming Wei Yahui, or Revolutionary KMT. Revolutionary KMT was founded in 1948 by left-wing KMT members opposed to the KMT's anti-communist stance. Its main role nowadays is to help serve as a bridge between the KMT in Taiwan and the government in mainland China. Its members are mostly academics who have some familial connections with the KMT. It's also apparently struggled in recent years to keep its membership alive, as its support base is aging, and few in mainland China want to associate with the KMT, who they associate with corruption, brutal crackdowns on dissidents, and ties to fascism. It runs the Unity Daily newspaper, which serves as a newspaper for the party. It has 151,000 members and sends 44 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Wan Shan, a jurist and member of the MPC. Next we go to the China Public Interest Party, or Zhongguo Jindongga. Jidong was originally founded in 1925 by Chinese expats in San Francisco. It was based around those in China who wanted a federalist system and opposed the KMT's attempts to unify China via force. Zigong would move to Hong Kong and would suffer greatly under the Japanese occupation of the city. By the end of World War II, most of its members turned to the CCP and joined the United Front. It claims most of its supporters are overseas Chinese who have recently returned to China, or people closely related to them. It runs the magazine China Zigong. It currently has somewhere between 50 to 60,000 members and sends 38 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Wang Gong who formerly spent several years working in Germany for Audi, is currently a member of the MPC, and is the former Minister of Science and Technology. The last party we will talk about is the Taiwan Democratic Self-Government League, or Taiwan Minju Zhuqi Tongmong. The league was founded in 1947 as the remnants of the Taiwanese Communist Party who were driven off the island by the KMT. It today seeks to represent people who formerly had some connection to Taiwan, and its goal is to reincorporate the island into the PRC. It is by far the smallest of the Democratic parties, with it only having 3,000 members, and has 13 delegates to the MPC. It is currently headed by Su Hui, a member of the NPC. So those are the Democratic parties of China. They are a very little studied subject of the Chinese political system, and I wish there was more information I could give you guys, but I hope you were still able to enjoy it a bit. I think it's good to kind of think of the parties less as political parties with different ideologies, but more as interest groups working with and for the Chinese government. I will say before I go, there is one academic source that, is, that I was able to find that was pretty good. 
The Encyclopedia of Modern China, which was edited by David Pong, if you look in the first volume, there's a small section where they kind of talk about the Democratic parties. And it's not for any, like, exclusive period of time. I think the longest one they talk about, the China Democratic Party, is, like, maybe five paragraphs. But at least it's something. Like, it's better than most other places where it's literally just nothing. I also managed to find on some, like, Spanish website uh, it was talking about the United Front parties. I did also read uh, Clientelistic State Cooperation, the United Front model of packing up in the Xi Jinping era. I can't remember who wrote that, but I remember thinking it was a pretty good explanation of kind of how the Democratic parties operate with the CCP. But again, it doesn't go into any detail explaining like what the parties actually are. If any of you happen to know a lot more about the parties, I would love to hear from you. I just... I just don't really know a whole lot, and it's a it's a subject that I really have not studied a whole lot, so yeah. Um I guess that will end the episode. Um up next I'll talk about the history of Bulgaria, so it'll probably be a couple more weeks. Uh finals are coming up for me before I release that. But we'll get that done, and then I'll talk about Croatian political parties and then Belgian political parties. But yeah, if you want, you can email me at why do countries exist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.